Hello listeners, we're currently on a break until February, but we keep finding cool stories that we want to share with you early. And this one's particularly relevant for the hot Australian summer, and I'm sure you've heard about our horrendous and unprecedented bushfire season. But a question many people have been wondering, Lucas, is when it's so hot and you need a drink and you want to cool down, are you better off grabbing something ice cold, something room temperature, or even a hot drink like a coffee or a tea? So what's the go? Well, I mean, intuitively, in Australia, we would think, Beer. of course, a cold drink. Like, that that seems to just make sense. You want to cool yourself down. And, uh, and you know, uh, for me, I uh, water, obviously, uh, iced tea. I'm very partial to iced tea, especially, you know, like homemade iced tea, really yummy. Um, but uh, it doesn't generally doesn't generally you know sort of jump into my mind to drink something hot mm. but apparently my a lot of other cultures always told me to drink something hot did she, she said, oh, well your mum is onto something <laughs> well yeah i mean she's right it it would seem that many other cultures um do tend to drink hot things uh when it's really really hot and it does appear that there's something to this and it, and it seems to relate you know quite simply it seems to relate to your body's response to heat what it what how do, how do we how do most mammals deal with heat not all but most what do we, how do we how do we dissipate heat sweat What's the most like common we thing? sweat yeah. sweat right yeah so you know that's that's one of the things that we do some other mammals are, are not as able to sweat like dogs quite famously they can i think they sweat a little bit from their paws but they they pant and if you watch actually i was watching my dog the other day when it was panting um, it, it really flattened, he really flattens out his tongue. So like to maximize the surface, surface area, area of the tongue. Yeah. And then this, yeah. And then this, this rapid movement of, of air across the tongue forwards and, and backwards, you know, in and out. Um, you, you could see how that would, you know, ra- dissipate heat, um, like a heat sink or the, the mm. ears of an elephant, for example. Um, but we don't have elephant ears and we don't pant, uh, well, at least not for this reason. So, um, <laughs> It does seem it does seem that in many other cultures and and one that's cited in a in a um, in this article is in Morocco where they have you know quite quite similar temperatures to us. Uh, we had I think in Penrith the other day, which is a suburb in the, in Western Sydney, they got up to forty nine point six degrees, oh. um, which is a a uh, I think it was forty nine point six or it might have been slightly higher than that, which was a, a record for them. So Morocco, those temperatures are also feasible, um, and so people there tend to drink piping hot glasses of mint tea uh, in order to cool down. And uh, hot tea is also drunk in other very warm countries like India and Malaysia, Turkey, Egypt, uh, Egypt, uh, United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, South Africa. They all have this these practices of drinking hot things. And it's not just tea. In some parts of the world, uh, for example, in a, a, a part of China, in southern China, they drink this, but basically they consume this hot pot, which is like a really spicy soup. Uh, which has got beef fat in it and a, and a whole lot of spices and so forth. And both of these things, whether it's the just a hot liquid or something that's super spicy, I know I react this way if I have a really yummy luxa. I love chili, but chili doesn't love me. Um, <laughs> chili makes me sweat like crazy. So um, both of these things can make you sweat. And, of course, the production of sweat is the way that we tend to actually cool down. So it appears that that sudden increase in heat um whether it's related to you know heat that's being delivered almost directly into your core which it would be with uh things that you're ingesting um will cause a sudden spike in sweat and that sudden spike in sweat can help you to cool down at least in the short term so there's a tip a tip for you Mm. drink something hot and report back tell us how that goes for you it is really counterintuitive like i was thinking there'd be something along the lines of like a a temperature gradient so you have a cold drink and then the cool thin side of you versus the hot outside of you means you're more likely to lose more heat i was thinking exactly the same thing but yeah i I thought exactly the same thing this is exactly the reason why um if you if you make two cups of coffee that are uh basically the same volume same container same cup but you put a little bit of milk in one and not in the other the one with the milk actually ends up staying warmer longer 
than the one without the milk, even though you've introduced cold liquid into that uh, cup. Because what you've I done did is that you, prac in year seven. <laughs> did you? <laughs> As yes. a student, yes. <laughs> And, yeah, and that's a temperature gradient thing. So, you know, that difference is, is not as steep, so it doesn't plummet as fast. And there's a point at which those curves cross over, which is really, really bizarre. So, uh, it, like you, Ed, I thought it would be the same thing. Um, mm-hmm. But, no, apparently this is what um, – <laughs> there's a study that was done in – I think it was 2012. Yeah. Um, it was done by the Scandinavian Psychological uh, – sorry, Physiological Society. No point in the psychologist <laughs> getting involved in this one. Do, does it feel cold? <laughs> Um, anyway, they... How do you feel about that? <laughs> did your mother tell um, you to drink hot drinks? <laughs> <that's>... <laughs> she did. Oh, my God. <laughs> We've wow. gone full circle. That's incredible. Yeah. So they, they said body heat storage is lower with warm water ingestion, likely because of disproportionate modulations in sweat output arising from warm sensitive thermosensors in the esophagus slash stomach. In other words, you sweat more. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... <laughs> but that's also interesting. There you go. Because, that's, a, that's our tip. But that, that works, sure, in a dry Australian heat. But if you're in a really humid, hot climate like Malaysia or something like that, I wonder, you know, you're already sweat sweating so much anyway. Yeah. Mm. So, that's a good point. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Well, I mean, hey. a lot of these areas that they've cited are very, very much temp- uh, um, uh, tropical type areas. Well, mind mm. you, a lot of them are very big countries as well. So, mm, I yeah. don't know. It's like you say India, but there's lots of variation in India of different climates. So, you know, this is one of those yes. studies that sort of first makes you laugh and then makes you think. I mean, uh, you know, it could be <laughs> another Ig Nobel. <laughs> <laughs> could be. We need could some be. kind of Nostradamus like. <laughs> pundits like which of the Ig Nobels did science on top call out yeah. in January yeah we can yeah. Anyway. <gasps> I like that Hit the stats. that's a great <laughs> idea yeah I'm not yeah. that confident we're going to pick that many but you know <laughs> well it often takes them a long time that's true it would be a long term study also we could just shotgun approach and call everyone a potential Ig Nobel like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep and then we can say, and we predictly, we, we predictly, that was uh, <laughs> yeah, we correctly we and predictly corrected together. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And then just ignore the ones that we correct, we, we predicted that we, we didn't actually yeah. come to fruition. That's how humans yeah. work. Yeah. Hits and misses. Mm. All right. And sweat. Hits, misses and sweat. Very good. <laughs> And that's it for this mini episode. Remember, we'll be back again in February for another season of Science on Top.